The International Harvester Farmall 140 was and remains one of the most popular and collectible international tractors to this day. And the reason behind that is that they, they built them from 1958 until 1981 when it was ultimately replaced by the International 274. Interestingly, the legacy attachments from the Farmall 140 and International 140 fit on the 274 for the most part. The cultivators, the side dresser, the planter, the rock shafts, all that stuff was interchangeable. The advantage of the 274 was that it had a three-point hitch on it. In 1958, International Harvester debuted the Farmall 140 and the grill on it resembled that of the, the current 46560 tractors. The 140 used the, the C123 International engine that debuted in 1951 with the Farmall Super C. It was carried over into the Super A-1, which was an interim tractor between the Super A and the 100, which wasn't quite ready yet. The Super A had the earlier C113 until the Super A1 came out, and then they had the C123. So the, the Super A1, the 100, the 130, 140, they all used this C123 motor that was detuned from 1800, I believe, for the Super C200 down to 1400, which gave it a, a horsepower range of about 20. The 140 had the smaller tires on it, like on the, the Super C, and then as it progressed, it, it got the bigger 16 inch tires. In 1963, when International updated the 140 again, they changed the grill to match the current 404 or 504. The 140 you see here has spent a significant portion of its life m mowing beside the road. Consequently, what happens is you wear one, one side of the tires off faster than the other because you're on the shoulder. In 1963, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, International took the Cub and 140 and converted it from six volt to 12. They went from a generator system to an alternator system with 12 volts and and that really increased the versatility of these tractors because it made them much easier to start particularly in cold climates well, this tractor here when my brother did some work on the engine a year or so ago he realized that the the motor was a 63 and the rest of the tractor was a 64 and that's really not uncommon because you know the motor was probably built in like november december and the tractor came off the line in you know january probably other than a little bit of painting here and there like he did on the, the top end and the oil pan, this tractor is basically in original condition. You can see the yellow primer that they used at the factory kind of bleeding through in places. Rear rock shaft to the rear lift. And so these right here are the, the plow lift. Similar, very similar to the Cub. And then he's got his umbrella post here for mowing beside the road. And obviously he had a license plate registered as a tractor because it was in the road all the time. And this may or may not be the original steering wheel, I, I, I can't tell you. I know that my 74 has a, an IH emblem on it, so that may be different. But this is an essentially an unrestored Farmall 140. This was a Farmall 140 until 1973 when they went to International, so it would say International up here. And then if you've noticed on mine, uh, it says Farmall here and then the 140 below. Previous to that, they still made an International 140, but it was the industrial version. And the easiest way to tell, for me, the industrial version is it has a square front axle, which is uh, much heavier. And there's also a foot throttle on it. Sickle bar mower is an A22, which was a holdover all the way back from the Super A. And it's lifted by the rock shaft on the side via the bar here. Fast hitch lift is independent of the mower lift. There was also a hydraulic outlet available, like on the Super C, uh, there was a separate valve that could be mounted here, and I've never seen one for real, and it would run to the back, and so you could use trailing implements with a hydraulic outlet on it. This touch control unit that you see here was International's reply to the Ford Sun three-point hitch. And the advantage of this over Ford was that as long as the motor was running, you had hydraulics. Whereas with the Ford, uh, you had to engage the PTO and then your, your uh, hydraulics ran off the PTO. So as soon as you push the clutch in, you didn't have hydraulics anymore. So you had to like kind of do a couple things at the same time. The Super A-1 came out 
most of this was all the same through the production run. Some were yellow. They were very common in the Northeast as a highway See the, the primer bleeding through here where, you know, he's rubbed it using the throttle so much. And then you can see a little bit here in the battery box. This 140 has the standard horseshoe with the swinging drawbar. And that was the the base tractor. The, the fast hitch was available basically from its inception until the end of production. IH had a whole line of fast hitch implements that, that could be purchased for this tractor. The Cub implements would fit on the 140 with no problem, but the, the 140 attachments going back to the Cub, even though the, the fast hitch was the same, the fast hitch on the Cub couldn't lift as much, so you just had to be careful about weight uh, constraints. My brother's very thrifty, <laughs> and you can see this uh, butterfly clip here, and so that would be the the stop for the touch control. And I, I see that this one in here works, and, you know, it's all freed up. He, his stuff was always immaculate, and uh, you'd be tough to find something that he had that was broken for very long, because he was pretty much right on top of getting it taken care of. My auxiliary tractor shed it's aka the garden shed and this is where I keep my 140 and it's very similar to my brother's it's 10 years newer actually if you look uh, same radiator cap as he's got so it's this square thing with the rounded corners so just like his so that was probably standard this one has the bigger front wheels on it and as you've seen in my cultivator video, it's uh, it's fun trying to get stuff in the front cultivator mount. You have to kind of jack up one side over the other. But notice, this is a Farmall 140 in 73, like I told you, they changed it. So the International, even though they'd always had Internationals uh, by 1973, International didn't mean uh, industrial anymore. It just meant that's, that's what they had because Farmall was making its last rounds in the early 70s, International being a worldwide company, they, the McCormick was gone, the Farmall was gone, and everything that they made was International. This tractor, really no change in it from 1958 until, you know, let's say 1980, uh, other than a little bit of sheet metal, and they went from 6 to 12 volts. Parts are really uh, highly available for these. It's a great tractor, and honestly, if I had had one of these before I bought a Cub, I don't think I would have ever gotten into Cubs. I would have just done 140s, Super A's, etc. because it's such a, a better tractor. It's got, you know, the sleeves, um, replaceable engine parts that, uh, like, the Cub doesn't have. Four-speed transmission, the, the 540 PTO goes the right way, and yeah, there's a lot of gunshots now. They're, they're out there trying to get koi dogs. About two or three weeks ago, uh, we had, there was an air show down at Pease, and when I was a kid, Pease was an active base, and now it's just a guard base. Uh, but we're in the flight path of Pease, and so when I was a kid, it was it was really common for the jets to come low treetop, and we'd be in the flight path, you know, the final approach for Pease. And it was kind of reminiscent, but. When I, when I see military planes treetop level coming in, it also reminds me, especially this time of year, of being in the Middle East, uh, you know, after September 11th. I worked on the runway a lot, and you'd see, you know, all of a sudden it was just this, you'd have to clear the flight line because there was something going on, and so we'd get out of the way, and then it would just fill up with aircraft and they were all loaded uh, with bombs and at the time it it was super intense but then as, as time goes by uh, you know things remind you of that and 
you know, you can smell jet fuel. You can hear the, the jets revving up and when they take off with the afterburners. And like, even, even here, it's, <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes I'll smell, I'll smell jet wash and, and it's like, where am I? I feel like I'm somewhere else. <laughs> A legacy tractor from International Harvester, very highly prized and sought after. It, it was a tractor that nationwide saw heavy use, vegetable farmers, uh, you know, livestock farmers used them. Tobacco, they were huge with tobacco. Cultivating tractors, cultivation, you could sit off to the side and see where you're going. But, but but even if you weren't cultivating, they were just such a, a great tractor because you could see where you're going. You, you're right here, your direct line of sight, see where you're going. Roadside mowing, a perfect tractor for roadside mowing because you can see your mower, you can see where you're going. Gardening, planting, you know, pretty much everything. You could rake and Ted hay with it because like I said, the 540 PTO went the right way. And it's, it's, a, it's a good solid tractor, very, very very um good tractor and still very much a, a useful tractor on a small farm today so i'm happy to have one and like i said now that i've i've got one in the super a uh i i don't think i'll be doing too much more with cops and i appreciate you watching thank you for the support thank you for the kind words the comments if you haven't already please take a moment hit the subscribe button down there and I will talk to you next time. Take care.